Junior, I need to go pick up this lawnmower. So hold down the fort. I'll be back in a little bit. Yeah, all right, Pa, that sounds good. I'll hold it down. All right, let's see what they want. Hello, Grass Rats Garage. This is Junior. I'm alone. How can I help you? Are you alone? Uh, yeah. I just said I'm alone. What do you want? What are you doing? Getting ready to work on a mower. What does it matter? Do you like lawn mowers? Well, yeah, it's a lawnmower repair shop. Look, make this quick. I got work to do. What's your favorite brand of lawn mower? Well, they're all kind of poorly made, really. What are you wearing? Uh, work clothes. All right, this is getting weird. Why are you asking me all this stuff? Because I want to know who I'm looking at. What? Okay, this is getting weird. Don't I'm hanging hang up, up on me. What do you want? Crossroads Garage Junior, how can I help you? Are you alone? Ah, what do you want? Leave me alone! What? Calm down. It's just me slippers. I was just wondering if you guys wanted a lunch. I'll be stopping by soon. Oh, slippers! <sighs> Alright, just get us a couple beef sandwiches. Pepperoni, au jus, fries. Alright, slippers. I'm busy, I gotta go. What? What do you want, Slipper? Why did you hang up on me? What do you want from me? I just want to know your favorite lawnmower brand. It's Lawn Boy, all right? Who is this? The question is, where am I? What? You're in the shop? Look, Slippers is coming down here with lunch, and he didn't bring you any, and he also knows karate. So I wouldn't mess around, buddy. Oh, that old man? Why don't you take a look out on the back pad? What? What's out there? Go ahead, take a look. Okay. Ha! You got slippers! You better let him go, he has my lunch! Too bad, ha ha, it's my lunch now. Ah! No! Ah! Those were the best beefs in town! You better save me some! Pterodactyl here! the small engine guru. And today, we're gonna be working on this. This Echo HC1600. We're gonna see if we can get this thing running. Somebody gave this to me. They said they were gonna go buy a battery powered one. And they said, you can have this one. I said, I'll take it. And you know what HC stands for? Hedge cutter, that's right. You, you in the back, you were right. So first thing I'm gonna do is put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna grab my worn out Phillips screwdriver and I'm gonna take this cover off. And we're gonna give it a little shot because it, it's got compression. So I want to give it a little shot, make sure the switch is on, for a test. We're not going to ruin it by doing this. We just want to see if it's got a carburetor problem. Nope, get the choke open. I'm going to give it a little shot of carb spray and see if it'll run and die without cutting the cameraman up. Now see, I'm left-handed, so I got to be like this. Then I'm gonna put the choke back on. This doesn't have a high speed trigger lock on it, so. So you know what that tells me? Carburetor problem. Carburetor. All right, let's take a look in the tank here. There's some old fuel in there, not very much. Oh yeah, look at that stuff. It's got water in it, see how cloudy it is? And I can hear the, uh, the fuel filter. Oh, there it is, there's the fuel filter. 
It came off the end of the hose. So this should be a pretty simple fix for you grass rats out there. Now usually this grommet, you know, gets all swelled up. But it seems like it's in good shape. I'm gonna get my tool that I made out of a piece of coat hanger. Made that out of a piece of coat hanger. Isn't that nice? And I'm gonna drag out that fuel line that's in the bottom of the tank. And we're gonna check that. Now that, that's not real spongy. That's still hard. So that fuel line is good. Huh. I'm gonna grab that, uh, you know what, I think I got a new fuel filter over here. Let me look. Cause I got new parts. Oh yeah. I got an actual Walbro branded fuel filter. There's the part number, 125552-1, and I had gotten these from Stens. And there's the Stens number. Usually they take that number and cover up the Walbro one because they want you to buy it from them. So here's a new fuel filter. I'm gonna stick it on the end of the hose. You know, you can tell when you got bad fuel lines, you'll go to shove that, that fuel filter on there and it'll just start splitting. And then you cut it off and you shove it on there again and it just keeps splitting, but look at that, it fit on there tight. And it's not splitting. You know what, I wonder if we can, this might be a short video y'all all right let's get some uh, some dinosaur syrup I always like to give it a shake dinosaur syrup and dinosaur juice mix out of my gas can that leaks out of my leaky can let's pour some in there Get a little more. Good, 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 good. There you go. There you go, baby. There you go, sweetie. Oh, that bulb. Look at that bulb. That does, that looks old. I'll replace that. Well, let's see if we can get it to run. Now I'm pushing that ball, but it's returning kind of slow. So, you know, inside these carburetors is a little fine screen that that fuel has to go through. And, uh, like if you've got one of these and you push on it and it stays sucked in, that's an indication that that screen, that little fine screen in the carburetor is all uh, plugged up because it's not letting the gas pass through it. All right, I got the choke closed. I pumped that thing a bunch of times. Woo. Take choke off, now that it popped and ran. Oh, that's not good. Okay, looks like we gotta go into the carburetor. It's carburetor time. Let me take my worn out Phillips screwdriver. Right, Carol, why don't you just go get a new screwdriver? Yeah, like I got time to be running all over the place. I gotta make a video every week and run this shop. I think I just got all kinds of time. I'm not sitting on the computer watching videos. I'm working 12 hours a day, seven days a week. 
It doesn't leave much time left for anything else. You should, you should take it, take some time off. You should, you should take a little break. You should take a vacation. So I got to use this kit that we got from John, I think his name was, from Ohio. John, I love that kit. I use it about every day now on something or another. All right, so two screws, removes that. Squeeze this up, hold this with our finger, and we should be able to get that, it's all gummy. Oh, look at the little Spider-Man. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Hi, Spider-Man. Leave him be. He ain't hurt nothing. All right, so we'll turn this up. We turn this to get that cable to release. All right, look out, cameraman. Need these. This thing is all gummy, this throttle. There we go. Now I can get that released. Pull that out. I'm going to release in case there's any pressure on this thing. Loosen the gas cap. And I'm going to pop these hoses off. And then remember which way they go. Just like that. Always remember because when you pump that bulb, it's sucking gas out of the carburetor, running it through the carburetor, and then pushing it back into the fuel tank. And the reason they do that is so there's fuel in the carburetor, so when you put it on choke, it'll start easier. Before they started putting these purge bulbs, these, this isn't a primer bulb, it's a purge bulb because it's purging the fuel. So it sucks it up, runs it through the carburetor, and pushes it back into the fuel tank. So that way when you put it on choke, it starts easier. One or two pulls, it pops, and you take it off choke. The way they used to do it before, you'd be pulling and pulling and pulling, and then as you're pulling on it, it's pumping the fuel pump to pump the fuel. So it would take that many more pulls to get it to pop. That's why they call a pull on a pull on, because you're pull on and pull on and pull on and pull on to get it to start. <laughs> you like my funny joke? All right, so let's take the diaphragm side off first because this has got the diaphragm. Which pushes on the, on the little metering valve which lets the fuel into the carburetor. So let's pop this side off first. I hope I got a kit for this thing. Now we want it, oh look at this thing. Hard as a carp. Hard as a carp. Look at that. There's our first problem right there. Now let's take this side off, which has our fuel pump gaskets on it. So that we can lose those screws. You need to get a little magnetic tray. Yeah, I got those magnetic trays around here somewhere. They're all full of crap. You get a little magnetic tray to put all your little screws and stuff in. Probably got a ton of them around here. All full of crap. Well, you should buy ten more. So you can fill those other ten full of crap. We're going to get rid of this because we're going to put a new one on. There's a screw here on this specific carburetor we also have to take off and then we need to pop this off oh there we go 
And this thing is, see these are a little fuel pump, a little. But this has got the one that's it's made out of this hard kind of plastic. These are better than the ones that are rubber. So in case I don't have a carb kit, I may have to use this over. And there's that little screen I was telling you about. We need to dig that out so we can see what's going on with that. Let's find some tool in here. One of these dental tools will work. Because you know I'm not I don't need dental tools because my teeth are perfect. So we want to dig that little screen out. It seems alright. And then there's no crap down in here. Now, see this little brass part here? There's an adjustment in there. That's the only adjustment for the carburetor. So I'm gonna blow this out with a little air. As soon as I find, uh, what did I do with that rag I had? Oh, I never got one. Oh, that was the last video. <laughs> yeah, we're filming multiple videos. I had a rag in the last video and I threw it away because it was all dirty. So I'm going to blow this out lightly. I got the air blowers right here. All right, now you don't want to blow a lot of pressure on these things because there's little check valves on these carburetors. You blow one of those little check valves out, you just ruin the carburetor. So don't go all crazy with the compressed air. So there's a little black plastic cap there. And under that cap is a screw, an adjustment. And I'm going to show you how to remove that cap. You need a little teeny tiny screwdriver. And I got one right here. And we, and we need some heat, so I gotta get the torch. So you're gonna need a little teeny tiny screwdriver and some heat. And I'm gonna warm this screwdriver up. So it'll melt that plastic. Now I just jammed it in there. Now I'm gonna let it cool. All right, see, we let it cool. Oh. oh, there, see? Sometimes it'll pop right out. Sometimes you may have to just dig it out a little bit. I'm going to heat it up some more. A lot of times I get lucky in it when it sticks to it. But I got most of it out that first time. See, there's that plug. There's that little, they don't want you in there messing with this. That's why they put that in there. They're like in the factory going, what can we stick in there to keep them from messing with the adjustments on the carburetor? Let's just stick a little plastic plug in there. They'll never know it's there. Ah! No, it's cooled off by now. Plus, these fingers are dead. So there, there it is. I don't know if he could see it. There's a little screwdriver slot in there. So there's an adjustment now. Didn't know that, did you? I just showed you something. Just taught you something. Let me blow it out with some air. You might be able to see it better. So a little screwdriver slot. So now you can adjust the carburetor if you need to. All right, so say you need a kit for this thing. Where's the carburetor at? Say you wanna get a kit. So you need to know what model carburetor this is. Make 
Christian is on the carburetor. And there's the information right there, China. That's how you look up China, and then you'll be able to find everything you need for this carburetor. No, I'm being silly. You're being silly, Taro. China's a country. So this is a Zama carburetor, see? It says Zama right on there. And the model of this, you can go to Zama's website. This is an RB carburetor. And then up here, it says K75. So we're gonna go to her website and we're gonna look up an RB K75 and then it's gonna tell us what kit we need. So now you're gonna join me at the computer. This is gonna be fun. So here we are on Zama's website and then you wanna to go to support, parts and service, Carburetor lookup. Got that? Support, parts and service, carburetor lookup. And then here's all the different carburetors. And here's ours, RB, see? RB, rhythm and blues. This is the rhythm and blues carburetor. So we click on RB, and now it's got that RB dash blah, 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 blah. So we want K75. Under the K, 75. All right, come on, scroll, baby, scroll. There we go. Under the K, 75. There's no K, 75 in bingo. Right there, K, 75. And then it's telling us if we want to buy the whole carburetor, how much it is. Well, I can get one cheaper than that on Amazon. Yeah, you might be able to. All right, so here's the rebuild kit. RB188. RB stands for rebuild kit. I know, Terrell. You went over all this before on another carpenter. That's right, I did. And I'm doing it again, you know why? Because we have new grass rats that are watching all the time. And they want to know. So that's why I do this every time. For the new grass rats. Hi, new grass rats. Hi guys. And then this is gasket and diaphragm kit, GND 106. Now GND stands for gasket and diaphragm. That's what that means, GND, gasket and diaphragm. Not, uh, it stands for GND, good, or ground. No, GND, gasket and diaphragm, 106. So that's the kit we need that's, those are usually the ones I buy. Well, what's the difference, Terrell? What's the difference between the RB and the GND? Well, the RB comes with a lot more parts. The RB comes with, you know, like a new metering level, that little spring, the little uh, metering level pin, a new needle. Uh, I think it comes with a new screen, some other gaskets. I normally just buy the gasket and diaphragm kits. I very rarely have had problems with uh, the metering valve and stuff. Sometimes, then you gotta buy, you know, that's if you take it all apart, but this one really isn't that bad. So we're gonna see if I got a GND 106. I, I'm crossing my fingers, I hope I got one. I don't know, I, I'm kinda thinking I don't, but we'll, we'll find out. So here's my, my little box with all my Zama kits in there and I got quite a few and I didn't have the 106. But like I mentioned earlier, this fuel pump gasket should still be good because it's made out of that other material. I don't know what the name of it is. I know one of you probably out there now. It's made out of this material. So I could use this over. What I need is the diaphragm. So in a lot of these kits, they will give you this diaphragm, the one we need, and they'll also give you like this one. So sometimes I save those diaphragms in a separate package, just in case, and voila, I got the one we need. 
So now the video can keep going, so now we don't have to cut and wait three or four days because I got to order a kit. So you always want to pay attention in, in the order that it goes together too. This is also important, you grass rats. You got to pay attention to the way things are. You got to pay attention to the to the order. See, this gasket goes with this, and you can see the little lines on there. And those lines were made by this, so it would go like this. You would not believe how many people buy these kits. And then they go, that didn't work. I couldn't get it to work because the guy went like this. He put this on first, then he put that on. That's wrong. So you got to play, pay, play. You got to pay close attention. See these little things here? These are check valves. Don't go taking little tools, jet drills or whatever, and go jamming them in these holes. Because you know what's in there? A real tiny piece of this stuff, a little tiny piece of that is in there. So you see that and you go, I need to jam something in there. Oh, yeah, that thing's probably plugged. Let me jam something in there. Yeah, there's something in there. That's what's doing it. Now you just ruin this part. There's a little check valve in there. That's why I tell you got to be careful that's why you can't blow a lot of air pressure in there you can blow that out with the compressed air just spray it spray it with some car spray a little bit and if you are going to blow it with air just blow it real lightly because you'll blow those little check valves right out of there Let's put this back together right see so you can see those little lines were all made by the little lines on here. So this goes like this. And this, since it's a fuel pump, is going to go against the machine surface. Because that's machine, you want it to sit flat. Same with this diaphragm. See this diaphragm? You know, you can put the gasket on the wrong side. You can put it together like this, that's wrong. You want to put it like that. That's the mistake a lot of people make. And then you want to make sure that's moving up and down. And then you want to get these tools too. Walro and Zama make them. Oh no, Turtle, you showed us these before. Well, these are from the new grass rats. Quit bugging me. See, Walro makes one and Zama makes one. And these are all the different models of the carburetors. This is the metering lever gauge. You can buy these online. So we got an RB. So all these models here is for this side. So you lay that up there and you want this metering level lever level metering lever to be right at the bottom see so ours is good and if you have to tweak it you tweak it a little bit because that that tells you how much fuel it's going to let in when that diaphragm is pumping that's how this works it's not as simple as just Taking it apart and throwing stuff in there, you gotta check things. I tried rebuilding that carpet tray, it didn't work. Yeah, because you didn't know what you were doing. You messed it up. You put the gaskets in there wrong. Upside down, backwards. Or this thing, they flip it around the other way. Yeah, let me show you what else they do. They do this, they stick this in like that on the ones that are square. This one is kind of idiot proof because it only fits in there that one way. But the ones that are square, you know, you can put it in wrong. I've seen it, I've seen it all. That's why after this video, I'm, I'm gouging my eyes out because I've seen it all. I need to see no more. Gouging them eyeballs right out. I heard it all too, so I'll probably jam a pencil in my ear.
I won't be able to hear anymore. Seen it all, heard it all. So I'm gonna use this screen over. I'm gonna spray it a little bit in case there's any, any crap in there. Cause we're like fixing it on the fly. It's like, you know what, I gotta fix this today. Them hedges gotta get trimmed. I got that time. Be messing around. I gotta get this thing going today. If I wait another week, those hedges will be even taller. That's you gotta get that thing in there right too. You don't want it sticking up. So you gotta play with it. Yeah, I keep getting one little corner sticking up. That ain't no good. Nope. Oh, then you drop it and it went into the fourth dimension. So now we're gonna put a new purge bulb on too while we're at it. They call it a syringe. They call it a syringe. And they come in a bag of 10 is how I buy them. And there's the part number in case you want 10 of them. Yeah, I want 10, Terrell. I got a bunch of these things with those little bulbs on them. Well, if you got a Walbro carburetor, it's a different size than this one. But I have a shop, so we go through quite a few of them. So we're sticking that on. We'll stick the screws through. Kind of hold everything in place. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? You forgot something, Carol. There was another screw in there first. That's right. You're right, you caught me. So we gotta stick this on like this first. Now there's little, those little nubs there will fit in there to hold everything in place for us. I forgot. There's a screw that goes in there. That's right, Terrell. I've been watching you. You almost made a crucial mistake. Yeah, and another mistake I made is I gotta put the right screw in there. That's right, Terrell. One of them, the head is a little smaller. Like your head. Like your little head. Your little peanut head. You're a little peanut head, Terrell. There's the right screw that went in there. Now I got my grubby mitts all over it. I'm gonna just spray that off a little bit. Lightly. And wipe it. Give it a little, little spray. Now we can put this on. With the purge bulb. You just said it was a syringe. Now you're calling it a purge bulb. What is it? Is it a syringe or a pur purge bulb? All right, let's stop splitting hairs over the terminology. There's some crap on there. Still on there. Still on there, Terrell. Crap's still on there. All right, I blew a little harder that time. Yeah, that's better. That's much better. Is there a torque spec on those screws? Yeah, there's a torque spec on them. It's called tighten them down. Now this throttle cable was a little sticky, so I kind of wiped all this off. And we're gonna spray some, some lubricant in it, some multi-purpose lube. Oh, why, why aren't you using your gel lube, Carol? Because that gel lube's a little sticky for this. I like to use something a little thinner on these cables. I, I've used the gel lube on it, on other cables and it's just a little little sticky. That's better for like assembling engines and stuff. I mean, it works good for other lubricating purposes, but something like this, I like to use a little lighter lubricant. Try to get it to work down in there. All right. 
but we can stick this back through. Open this thing wide open. How's that screwdriver? So this little this little device here, you know, it's got a bigger end on it on one side than the other side. The other side's just a slot. This side has got the big hole for this to go into, so be aware of that. I'm gonna spray this top down a little bit. It seems kind of gummy from all that two cycle oil and stuff. Over the years, you know how it gets that gumminess on there? All right, watch out, Mr. Cameron. Oh, we're closed and money's calling. It must have hung up. Money hung up on you. All right, so remember we said we had to remember which hose went where? I can kind of tell that this one is fatter. So that one went there. I can tell that one was spread out a little more. You can mark them. If you get them mixed up, you'll know. Okay, I got my fuel lines hooked back up and I'm punching on my purge bulb and we got fuel coming through so now we're gonna put our screws in you should replace that gasket Carol well I don't have one and it's gonna leak it's not gonna work you just waste it all your time I'm turning this video off you wasted my time and your time by not replacing that gasket well that gasket's fine it's perfectly good Okay, we'll see. You and your little trickster photographer, man. Tricking us when we know that you should have replaced that gasket. Yep. Mr. Cameraman, just overdub the sound of this thing running. Even though it's not running. Because we're trickster. Alright, let's see if this thing starts now. which is right here now. 
We need to open that up. Give it a good half a turn. We may have to set that idle up again. Now this thing has got a clutch in it. Those blades are stuff, supposed to stop spinning. Of course this switch is hard as a carb too. Let's spray some carb clean around there. Blow it out. All right, let's see how it runs now. to set these you know you can set these blades the tension on them because it works like a um, almost like uh, setting the valves on an engine this bolt is threaded and that nut so you loosen that nut and you kind of tighten this up a little bit so you can get that play out of there. See, there's a little play in there to make it cut better. See how this one's real loose right here? So you need a couple of 10 millimeter wrenches. Break this one loose. And you can turn the bottom one. You don't want to over tighten it because then the blades won't move at all. So I see the problem here is this isn't the right washer. They got these real thin washers on here. So somebody didn't put the right washer on here. I'll have to get one. So now I'll hold it in that position and I'll tighten the thing on the top, the nut on the top, and that locks it. See how that washer's spinning? So I'll loosen this on the top, loosen this nut on the top, and I'll turn this. Now just back it off because we want that washer to move a little bit. Back it off a little bit and then tighten the nut on the other side. Yep, went a little too tight. So let me back it off some. Keep backing it. There, now it's moving. See, and then you keep tightening it. Back it off a little more, tighten it up here until we get that, that washer to, to move a little. It's got to move. And that's how you adjust. And then I'll show you how to sharpen it.
All right, I got the blades all adjusted now. I want to start it up again. The kill switch is, is bad. I don't know if it's a switch or the wire's going to it, so I disconnected it. This is the wire going right to the coil. So I got this little jumper. If I touch this to ground, it should kill the motor. And if it does, then this switch is dirty or bad and I'll have to replace it at some point. too is this one of these little anti-vibration things is gone I'll have to look that up and get that ordered this cover is broke this muffler cover I think I'll look up one of them and get a new one but I'm gonna pop this cover off here that goes to the coil and find out why we can't shut this thing off. Because I'm going to use this at home. Alright, let's see what's going on under here. Oh! Wires off the coil. Somebody's been in here monkeying around. See what else they did. Make sure the air gap on the coil is okay. Is this fitting tight? No, it's loose. Knuckleheads. Oh, and there's a bunch of grass and debris in there. I'm going to have to blow out of there. Look at that. I'm trimming the hedges. So, I like to use a pair of side cutters to kind of crimp that. You're gonna cut that, you're gonna cut that, Terrell, and ruin it. Stop that. Why don't you just use some needle nose? Because that gives it a better bite, the side cutters. Still fits a little loose. Crimp it a little bit more. There we go. All right, look out, Mr. Cameraman. I'm gonna blow that crap out of there. Tell somebody been in there. They... Oh, look at this. The kill wire. Looked like it got pinched. That touches ground. That's going to create a problem. You can put some tape around that. I don't have a new wire to put on there right now. I could always replace it later. So I went upstairs in the parts room, my old bedroom for those who know, and I got me a new air filter. And this is a rotary branded one, and there's the number 10759. For some reason they don't go with that 27 dash. They only use the back part of it. And we're gonna see how it may run a little different, because I know what some reason. You're supposed to tune that carburetor, Terrell, with the air filter in it. It's not going to run right because you, did, you didn't tune it with the air cleaner on there. Yeah. Well, what if I would have tuned it with that air cleaner on there? 
Probably wouldn't have ran any better either. If it doesn't run right, just open the screw a little more. If it's running too rich, then close the screw up. Simple as that. All right, let's see if that uh, kill switch is gonna work and see how it runs with an air filter in it. When I did the backpack, the Echo backpack blower, I had to get in there and adjust that. That was on a newer piece of equipment. Oh, here we go with the phone again. It's after hours, we're closed! That worked. So they have this special D-shaped one for the newer ones that you have to get in there. This is a special tool to get in there to adjust it. But this older one, they blocked it off like they did the other side with that plastic plug. And you have to use a little teeny tiny screwdriver. So you gotta do the same thing. I heated this screwdriver up, the little, the little end of it, and I stuck it in there. And see, there's another plug. That's keeping you from getting at that other adjustment. But you got to have one of these little teeny tiny screwdrivers. Boy, that thing's really stuck on there. I let it cool that time. That's what you want. You want it to stick to it. So you got to have one of these little teeny tiny ones. Now I can get in there and get at that adjustment. I just felt the screwdriver click in. Now I can open that a little. I want to give it a little more fuel because it was falling on its face on high speed. Let's see how it runs now. Kick that fan on again so we don't die.
playing with all them adjustments. Another thing is it might not have enough gas in it still. Yeah, I didn't put enough gas in it, I don't think. So since I played with that idle, and I had to give it some more gas, richen it up, I need to turn the idle back up. So now we got it running good. So you learned a couple things where they're hiding those carburetor adjustments. So the last thing I want to go over is sharpening it. This will just take a minute. So Mr. Cameraman, you got to get over here so I can show the grass rats how to sharpen this. And I use a wizard wheel. So on these, you know, this is, this is what does the cutting here. So you have to get the blades forward in this position to do this side. And I just take a wizard wheel. And I can do these, because I use this part of the wheel. And I use a thick wheel. I like to use a thick one. And you just try to follow that angle that's already on there. And you can feel that it's sharp. And you just do every one. Or you can buy new blades, but these are pretty dull. And you can feel when it gets sharp. This edge, this tip is real dull. So you may have to take a lot off. You're not gonna hurt anything. It's just a stupid head trimmer. So you gotta go along and do every one of them on this side. And then you gotta do this side too. See, this side's got cutting edges on it too. See? You just feel it and you'll feel it, Charlie. Woo! It'll burn you. I can feel that this edge wasn't sharp right here. You just go along and do that on every one of them. It goes pretty quick. But there's a lot, lot of them to do. So then once you get all them done, then you gotta flip it over again. And then you gotta get it so you can do the other side. Cause remember we did this side. So now we gotta get it to go to that side. So you're gonna have to start it to do that. Or you can get it in this position here. If you can get it in that position, you can probably just. That's well, kind of tricky because you don't want to. You don't want to hit the other one. Nice and sharp. So you gotta do this side, this side, this side, and this side. So I still have more work to do on this. Like I said, I need to uh I need to get the proper washer for here. Because that's not the right one. Somebody put that in there. I need to get one of these. My brother Farrell's probably got a whole bunch of these. He works on a lot of this stuff. I need to get this cover that's broke because I don't want that muffkin to be burning me. And I know you're saying, Terrell, Terrell, it's leaking gas. Why is it leaking gas? 
It's leaking gas because this is the tank vent. This is what vents the fuel tank. There's a little vent in here. See? That's the tank vent. That's what you see leaking. Because there's no vent in the cap. So when I had it flipped upside down to sharpen it, you know, and I'm shooting sparks. So if you're doing this, you need to empty the tank. Empty the fuel tank on yours because you don't want to start a fire. So when you flip it over, you don't have a bunch of gas laying around and then the next thing you're starting on fire. But I'll get this sharpened up. See? See all that fuel that's coming out? That's coming out of that tank vent. So yeah, safety first. You know, and here you are. Well, you didn't empty it, Terrell. You're a knucklehead. Yeah. I got a fire extinguisher and a hose right by. Ain't like I ain't been on fire before. So what do we got into it? Air filter, diaphragm, tank filter. I'll put a new plug in it. Uh, we fixed the kill switch. I got to get this, this anti-vibe buffer. Oh, we put a purge bulb in it. I got to order that part, order this cover, and get me that washer. And then I'll finish uh, sharpening it up. And then I'll have me a good little, little head trimmer that'll be all nice and sharp and ready to go. So, we got this, uh, this turd running and somewhat polished. We polish this turd a little bit. So subscribe to this YouTube channel, Terra Fixes All. This is me, Terrell, the crazy guy grinding on the head trimmer blades when gas is leaking out of it and throwing sparks. That wasn't very smart of me. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Follow me with your head trimmers, but don't don't cut me with them. On Facebook and Instagram, go to our web store, buy some Terrell apparel. We got all kinds of stuff there. We got tools, we got other things. Check it out. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! Got the Echo Head Trimmer running! Woo! You learned some things! Like hidden uh, carburetor adjustments. That's for you. That's my dinner coming back up. Look, you jerk. You already ruined my lunch, so just leave me alone. I'm already all locked in the shop here anyway, so you couldn't get to me even if you wanted to. You forgot to lock the back door. <laughs> Too late. I'm in the shop. Ha 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 ha. There's a ghost face killer on the loose. He's already got slippers. What are you talking about, Junior? There's nobody in here but you and me. I'm telling you, Pa, there's a guy calling here harassing me. He's got a ghost mask on, and he ate my lunch. That sounds like crazy talk. Well, I'm here now, Junior, so he ain't got nothing to worry about. Ah, it was you. It was you that ate all our lunches. No, Junior. I found this on the seat of that customer's mower I just went to pick up. I was gonna use this mask to scare slippers. I don't know if I believe you, Pa. Seems a little bit too close of a coincidence. You've been taking these Halloween pranks a little too far. <laughs> 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 think you can handle it, but I guess it's only fair. It was only me. Elkskins. What? Elkskins? You mean it was you the entire time? Yeah, we were just messing with you, Junior, and we got you good. <laughs> got you good, didn't we, Junior? Bet you didn't see that coming. Got you, Junior. Happy Halloween! <sighs> oh, thank goodness, it was all a prank. So does that mean you didn't actually eat my beef sandwich? No, I ate it. No! <laughs> It was good. 
Yeah, happy Halloween. <laughs> I'm telling you, Pa. Get a little gasket go.